This is Good Day Las Vegas. That came out smooth, I think, right? It felt, <laughs> sure. yeah, it felt normal. <laughs> Six o'clock Monday morning. Thank you for joining us on Good Day. I'm John Langland. I'm Alex Backus. Yeah, as normal as anything can feel on Monday morning. <laughs> you know, I guess all you really need to know is that game was great. Yes. And they had a really cool trick. They a hat trick. A hat trick. Three goals. <laughs> well, don't worry. We'll talk also about smooth. it. We'll sort it out. We'll smooth things. It's a long show, people. Sherry's here with a look at your forecast. Back from a week off. Good morning, Sherry. Hey, good morning, everybody. Glad to be back, that's for sure, in a drier climate. Texas, a little on the hot and humid side this it's, time of year. It's calling what they what they call their second summer. Yes, it was, uh, well, it was hot in the Lone Star State. It is windy and dry this morning. Hang on to your hats and skirt alert day, everybody. Our ladies, uh, we are looking at some high winds today. Uh, we've got a mix of low 80s and some upper 70s. We've had gusts to 20, 25 miles an hour. Out at the lake, a mountain spring summit between Pahrump and Las Vegas has been pretty bumpy. All thanks to this low pressure system bringing rain to the Pacific Northwest. Clouds our way, but the air will stay very dry. Fire weather warnings are in place for your Monday, so that just puts us on alert that uh, any fire that gets started could get out of control very quickly. Kiddos, we do have a dry, windy day ahead of us. It will look for highs not as hot as the weekend in triple digits mid 90s but look for those gusty winds hang on to your homework today it will definitely blow away already on to the roads at 602 good morning to Nate how is that commute moving along good morning Sherry and good morning to you 602 on your back to work back to school Monday Sherry you just took away some kids best excuse ever <laughs> my homework blew my, away. my homework blew away <laughs> I did it I had it done I was ready to bring it in so sorry there you go freeways are looking pretty good here's a heads up that I think they're making some progress, but a, a weird crash on westbound TROP. So if you're on TROP coming from the airport headed for the freeway, you got to really look out here. Here's what's going on. There was a car facing the wrong way in those westbound lanes. So Las Vegas Boulevard is going to be across the bottom of your screen, I-15, way to the top. Uh, this car somehow ended up jumping the curb and almost driving right into the uh, parking garage of New York, New York. Again, they are allowing some traffic through, but watch for those flashing lights. That you know, definitely going to be a slowdown for you. And coming up in a few minutes, we'll tell you about the ghost of Project Neon and how it's taking away a ramp in the spaghetti bowl for the next three nights. John, Alex? All right, thanks, Nate. 603 now. A man accused of killing his ex girlfriend will make his first court appearance today. Giovanni Ruiz was arrested last week. Bianca Holman live in North Las Vegas with details on the case. Bianca, good morning. Good morning, John. We've learned a lot more about Giovanni Ruiz. He's 21 years old, and we were informed that he was attending graduate school at UNLV. And that's also where his ex girlfriend, Paula Davis, who was killed, 19 year old Paula Davis, was studying economics. So we've been able to learn a lot about this situation so far. We know that her family reported her missing Friday, September 6th. They were able to track her cell phone to a park near the home, uh, which was Desert Horizons. Park, and that's where her father found her shot to death in the van. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Before the arrest, police said investigators believe she knew her killer. Davis's ex boyfriend, 21 year old Giovanni Ruiz, was booked in the Las Vegas Detention Center on account of murder. Davis recently broke up with him. Sean Davis, Paula's dad, says they, of course, are missing her dearly. She was a joy. Um, you know, we think about the 19 years that we had with her, and um, it was a blessing. It was, um, you know, one of those times where you remember the gift that life is, and uh, she certainly was a gift. She was like that since she was young, just kind of always up on her toes and um, just very happy. The arrest report mentioned Davis telling her family and friends Ruiz was jealous and possessive, which is why she broke up with him just a few days prior to her death. The report also goes on to detail how officers found a handgun at Ruiz's home that was purchased the week of Davis's death. And Davis's family says they didn't see any warning signs. Now, coming up in the next half hour, I'm going to share just more details on how her family and how her community of loved ones are grieving um, about this entire tragic situation. Bianca Holman, 8 News Now. Bianca, thank you. Today, another high profile case is in court. A 19 year old being sentenced for a deadly DUI crash. Uh, that is Alexander Brewer, who has been convicted of driving under the influence when he hit and killed 18 year old Garrett Merriweather back in May. Garrett's family has since been speaking out against drunk driving, and they've launched a scholarship foundation in their son's name. 
Brewer is in court for his sentencing at 9.30. Alex. John, presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders was in Las Vegas this weekend. He teased a national housing plan to tackle rising rent rates in cities across the country. We have an affordable housing crisis in Nevada, in Vermont, and all over this country that must be addressed. And for too long, this is one of those issues that we just don't talk about. It's pushed underneath the rug. We're going to talk about it today, and more importantly, as President of the United States, we're going to deal with this issue. The senator's plan will cost about two and a half trillion dollars over the next ten years. It would call for a national rent control standard that would cap annual rent increases throughout the country at no more than one and a half times the rate of inflation or three percent, whichever is higher. He also held a town hall in Carson City, and there there was an emotional moment when he confronted a veteran who said he was contemplating suicide. How are you going to pay off? Uh, I can't. I can't. I'm going to kill myself. I don't, oh, John, stop it. You're not going to kill yourself. Right, I can't deal stop. with this. Right. I have Huntington's disease. Do you know how hard that is? You know, you probably don't, do you? I can't drive. I can barely take care of myself. All right, let's start later at the end of the meeting, okay? Sanders and his wife spent some time talking to the man afterward, but there's no word on exactly what they spoke about. A reminder that 8 News Now is your local election headquarters. For all updates on the 2020 race and on local politics as well, just go to 8newsnow.com. 607 now, and today we will get an update on construction at Allegiant Stadium. Yeah, of course, the Stadium Authority Board will meet today to talk about the budget on the project, a community benefits plan, and the lease agreement. And we should get an update on how construction is going. The work is supposed to be finished in nine months. As for the Raiders, dot, dot, dot. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Ron Futrell with the Silver and Black Report, talking about the Chiefs and the Raiders yesterday in Oakland's Alameda Coliseum. Raiders start out with a bang. Derek Carr to Tyrell Williams. It's 10 0 early on in this game. Raiders looking good early, but here comes the Kansas City sledgehammer, Patrick Mahomes. He finds Demarcus Robinson. A little later, Mahomes to McCole Hardman. With this team, they're explosive. Hey, going deep again. There's Hardman. And Mahomes just keeps it going. How about Travis Kelsey? Kelsey, and he holds. Can't stop the clock. And then a second quarter nightmare for the Raiders ends with a second Demarcus Robinson touchdown catch. 28 unanswered points by the Chiefs. It rocks the Raiders 28-10. Raiders fall to 1-1 one and, one and travel to Minnesota for a game next Sunday. And don't forget to watch the Big Game Report every Thursday at 10 a.m. on 8newsnow.com. For the Silver and Black Report, I'm Ron Futrell. All right, hockey is back. The Golden Knights started their preseason schedule yesterday. Yeah, Vegas hosted the Arizona Coyotes at T-Mobile Arena. Max Pacioretty, or should I say Pacioretty, <laughs> he fired up the crowd early. Max Pacioretty had three goals and a hat trick, and the Golden Knights won yesterday 6-2. to two. I think the uh, icing on the cake there is a sixth goal of the game, empty netter, and uh, they show the fans on the Jumbotron and they're dancing like it's game seven of the cup final. Uh, I don't know, the guys on the bench were loving that. It's, uh, it's a party in there, and, and it gives us energy, whether it's the first preseason game or a playoff game. It doesn't matter. We go out there and we want to have fun and play hard in front of our fans. So the Knights win in the first game of the preseason is today's morning jolt the story that all of you are talking about here are some comments that you've left on our facebook page cindy wrote what a thrill of a game lee said yes it's preseason yes they still won there are golden knights justina commented patch was playing beautifully today carrie said i love preseason it was a very exciting game fun stuff happens in preseason and nancy said nancy said totally awesome patches <laughs> you For can patch ready yes you can join the conversation on our 8 News Now Facebook page. So excited to go to a game this season. You need season. to go. You'll go, we'll go, everyone's going to go. We're all going to go. Hockey time. Ten minutes past six here on your Monday morning. Still to come on Good Day Las Vegas. Cities becoming hotter because of all the pavement that's around towns. Yeah, what New York City's doing to combat the growing problem. And before we go to break, here's a look inside the control room, including one producer who was responsible for me saying hatch already instead of patch already. <laughs> but notice how the lights are in the dark so you can't actually see her. But she mm -hmm. is there. And she has there more news is. than we do too. It's coming up after this.
Laughlin, Nevada. With John Langler, Alex Backus, Sherry Swensk, and Nate Tannenbaum. This is Good Day Las Vegas on 8 News Now. Back to work, back to school, Monday morning, and a beautiful start to the day. Hey, we found out that summer camp is no longer just for kids. About 60 people, all over the age of 50, just spent three days and two nights on Mount Charleston at Camp Silver Pines. We're just going to do a quick camp tour, show you where everything's at. Jeff Yates from Clark County Park and Rec noticed some of the campers a little eager to have lunch. Hey, guys, don't go in there yet. Come out here. Come campers. Morning. The tour included the half dozen or so multi bunk cabins where the campers would be enjoying the cool mountain air, as well as the rec hall where there'd be a line dancing class, and the teepee classroom where I'd be playing my flute and talking about weather. I caught up with another guest speaker from the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority. So, what are you talking to the campers about? Well, we um, have a collaboration with the Nevada State Museum Las Vegas, yeah. a collaboration with the Las Vegas News Bureau. They're taking hundreds of photos from their huge collection out into the community, not only to show them off, but also to see if Las Vegans can help them identify some of the famous and not so famous folks in the pictures. Plus, they gave everybody cool, flashy, light, welcome to Las Vegas sign lapel pins. How's everything? Great. I think we're almost at noon. We're almost ready to have fun. Okay. <laughs> the day I was there, lunch was chicken tacos or chicken tortilla soup, or both. You had, you had what? You had Absolutely. <laughs> Why is that not a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> but the food is good up there, and mm. there were 60 people, age 50 and over, hanging out and just chilling. They're taking mm. classes for line dancing, Aww. jewelry. I love that. And uh, Sherry was going to be there it with was. me, but her travel plans took her to Texas. Mm -hmm. um, they charged the campers 130 bucks for Camp Silver Pines. Oh. And uh, it, it's funny how people have been saying on our Facebook page, I didn't even know this existed. Mm -hmm. It's a Camp Lee Canyon up on Mount Charleston. It's been up there for decades, oh, so yeah. check it out. Great place to cool off, too. Oh, I bet was, they the really did. Was yeah. beautiful. It's great. Especially at the end of summer when you just want to yeah. change. Yep. That's a good yeah, change. And who says summer camps have to be just for kids, right? They exactly can be for right. adults, Everybody. older adults, younger adults. Head up to the mountain and have some fun. Yeah. Well, I don't feel so bad now because I'm getting razzed for not bringing back barbecue. <laughs> and Nate, did you bring back tortilla soup? Yeah, uh, where's our soup, Nate? Okay. I was right. going to put some Shoo. in my pocket. Mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the heat's off me now. Next time. Looks like a lot of Fun. Yeah. yeah. So next year. Off. Next year I'll be there for okay. sure. Sounds I'll plan like a my dare. trip home a different time. <laughs> Maybe when it's not as hot and humid. Boy, mm. Texas was cooking wow, last I week. Bet. It was so hot. Hot here as well and windy. I know we had a little break in the temps last week, mm. but back up to triple digits mm. over the weekend. Uh, we've got more wind to deal with, everybody. Uh, no, this is not an ad for the Impossible Burger here. This is just to show you that the winds are still moving around out here off uh, near uh, West Cliff and Rainbow. The flags have been blowing. We've had 25, 30 mile an hour winds in the valley, but Kyle Canyon recently had a 40 mile per hour wind gust. Uh, we've got red flag warnings. Some areas of southern Nevada under wind advisories. Today, this is a system blowing into the northwest. 79 in Green Valley, 78 at Blue Diamond, 77 at Aliante. So, some neighborhoods are finding the 70s. We're still above normal. We hit 102 both Saturday and Sunday. Mesquite at 78, Red Rock and Prump, beautiful at 75. 70s for both Kingman and Boulder City right now. We're looking for a little break in the heat today at 96, trying to get a little more seasonal at 94. And we're getting the sunrise and sunset just about 12 hours apart as we're one. Week away from the autumnal equinox, just a week away from the start of fall. Red flag warnings with wind in the west. Hurricane Humberto has a 80 plus mile an hour winds, 85 right now, just skirted by the Bahamas and is now headed back out to the Atlantic. Thank goodness nobody's worried about the hurricane hitting the east coast or the southeast. And we've got these wind warnings, or advisory, excuse me, for uh, most of Lincoln County, Nye County, Esmeralda counties, and just northwest uh, Clark County. But we do have a red flag warning today for our area, all of Clark County, because of the dry, gusty winds today. So fire weather concerns very elevated today. Mid 90s down to 90 tomorrow. This system uh, will have a couple of components to it 
the wind today and cooler air. And then another feature moves through Wednesday. More wind. And look at the 80s. 80s, everybody. Thursday, Friday. Mornings in the 60s. And then back up a little warmer again for the weekend. Yep, fall's on the way. Hope you, hopefully everybody's getting ready for it. Let's get ready for your commute. Nate, what you say? Well, there's still a mess on Tropicana westbound between Las Vegas Boulevard and the freeway. And a lot of folks leaving the airport property headed for the I-15 on Tropicana. So here's the deal. We're told now that this was a multi-car crash, and we appreciate the comments on the Facebook page. Uh, one woman saying that she was almost involved in this crash. So this car jumped the curb, went through a wall here, and almost into the parking garage of New York, New York, except that's not an entrance. We're told that there was at least one car facing the wrong way. So you're looking at westbound trough. Las Vegas Boulevard down the bottom of your screen up towards the I-15. So there is travel allowed through here, but you got the right lanes completely blocked. So we'll continue to keep you posted on that one. Meantime, the Spaghetti Bowl, yes, the ghost of Project Neon lives on. They're taking away the ramp from the South 95 to the South 15 for the next three nights. The detour, fairly simple. You'll basically take that same ramp, but they'll cone you off at Charleston, and the exit to Charleston ends up being the entrance onto the South 15 from Charleston. Alex? All right, thanks, Nate. 619 now. New York's governor has directed health officials to ban the sale of flavored e cigarettes. This comes amid a surge of vaping related illnesses and deaths among people all across the country. That ban could take effect in as little as two weeks. President Trump proposed a similar federal ban last week. Earlier this month, Michigan became the first state in the country to ban the sale of flavored e-cigarettes. World leaders will gather at the United Nations Climate Action Summit in New York City to discuss global warming. The city of New York is already trying to tackle, though, the problem. New York has what's called the Cool Roofs Program. It supplies a special reflective paint at low or no cost. It's painted onto the roofs of buildings so that the roof absorbs less heat, and that reduces energy costs and the carbon footprint. These white surfaces will keep these buildings cooler rather than the dark surfaces that you see on traditional rooftops. The world's heating up. My personal opinion is this should have been done a long time ago. Larger cities, including Las Vegas, experience what's called the urban heat island effect. We're warmer because of the sun absorbing dark rooftops and street pavement. And it has a lot of cities turning to designs to try and cope. San Francisco passed a green roof law requiring new buildings to have solar panels and plants. In Los Angeles, roofing materials have to meet new sun reflection standards. And a Houston neighborhood reduced its temperatures by planting 175 large trees. One way to try and stay cool. Yeah. 621 now. Coming up, you do not want to mess with this Montana granny. Seems about appropriate. <laughs> Speeders were driving by her house, and it was so crazy, she decided to take action. How she's tricking people into slowing down coming up. Because she's so chill. <laughs> and it is time now for today's contest. Register to win on 8newsnow.com by clicking the contest tab. Good luck. We'll be right back.
let's get you taken care of. This is Good Day Las Vegas. 6.25 here on your Monday morning. So, a grandmother in Montana. She's now an honorary state trooper. She decided to take a neighborhood speeding problem into her own hands, literally. Look. <laughs> we were talking about maybe something would slow cars down. So, we decided to put me in a chair and I guess you say her dryer as a speed thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Patty Bumgarner. She went viral <laughs> on social media. <laughs> she looks so irritated too, doesn't she? <laughs> so her grandson <laughs> tweeted that picture of her in the chair holding up her hair dryer. There it is. The idea is that drivers would slow down thinking that her blow dryer was a radar gun tracking their speed. Well, that caught the attention of a real state trooper, and he gave Patty a badge and a trooper hat to make her look a little more official <laughs> as she sat on the side of the road. <laughs> Despite all of that, Patty says she's not sure if the hair dryer is really slowing down cars, but... It is giving them more yes. volume. <laughs> The hair dryer volume. Yeah, she is determined. So, you know what? <laughs> Nate, that was driving her nuts. It was driving her completely crazy, <laughs> Nate. Good morning to you. And good that morning was good to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 626 <laughs> on your Monday morning. Now, a viewer writes in that some motorcyclists are driving her crazy, and we've all seen them. Motorcycle riders weaving in and out of traffic, or in many cases, splitting lanes so they can keep moving forward. Viewer Donna writes, I see motorcyclists cutting people off. They drive in between two lanes a lot of the times. So my question is, is it legal for motorcyclists to drive between the lanes of cars weaving in and out of traffic? Donna, the answer in Nevada and many other states is no. The website ZeroFatalitiesNV.com has a page devoted to motorcycle law with this specific paragraph on lane splitting. Lane splitting or filtering is illegal in Nevada. Riders cannot ride between moving or stationary vehicles occupying adjacent traffic lanes. Now side-by-side -side motorcycle riding is allowed, but only when both parties consent. Donna, thanks for your question. Buckle up, drive carefully, put down that phone. If there's something driving you crazy, email me, traffic8 at 8newsnow.com. Include pictures or video of whatever it is you're concerned about as long as you're not taking those pictures and video while you're driving. Snail mail works too. We're at 3228 Channel 8 Drive in Las Vegas, 89109. John Alex. 627 here on your Monday morning. Still to come on 8 News Now. Speaking of driving people crazy, mm -hmm. it was NASCAR weekend up at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Yeah, we'll show you the frustrating race for Las Vegas native Kyle Bush. We'll be right back on Good Day Las Vegas.
sold. Request your free purchase offer today. Now on Good Day Las Vegas, nearly two weeks until we commemorate two years since 1 October. Mayor Carolyn Goodman joins us here in studio, the special tribute from the city. Plus, Sherry is back, and so are the 90s. We'll talk about when we'll see the first sign of fall in your Weather Now forecast. And a new hand being dealt along the strip. Today's turnover at Hooters Hotel and Casino. Good Day Las Vegas on a Monday starts right now. Now, live, this is Good Day Las Vegas. And a very good morning to you. It is 631 on a Monday. I'm Alex Beck. I'm John Langler. Hopefully you had a good weekend. What did you get up to this weekend? Uh, I enjoyed the triple digits by the pool. Okay, that's the yeah. best way to enjoy it. Yeah, how was yeah. your weekend? It was good. Went to yeah. California. Went to a little wedding there. Got ah. to see the ocean for a change. It was a nice that little is nice. change of pace before coming back to the desert. That is nice. And this weekend, Sherry also came back from Texas. Good yeah. morning, Sherry. Well, how do y'all? Came back from the Lone Star State. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't talk like that uh, too much or for too long when I come back. But it, well, I did enjoy being home. Got my fill of Tex Mex and barbecue and steaks and all that good stuff. Also, a lot of heat and humidity back in the deep uh, south. And coming back to dry air feels good. But today, Dry, gusty winds creating uh, some fire weather concerns for us here in the desert. So everybody's going to have to be on guard, be on alert. Uh, we've got temps a little above normal, low 80s, upper 70s, all thanks to a system moving into the Pacific Northwest. They've got rain up in Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. But for us, we get a mix of clouds and sun and very dry air with a lot of gusty winds today. So red flag warnings posted for all of us here in Southern Nevada. Please be careful. Watch those cigarette butts. Anything that could get a a fire started, it could get out of control quickly. We'll be looking for clouds and sunshine and lots of wind with cooler highs in the mid 90s for your Monday. Alrighty, let's uh, get to those roads with Nate, who did not have to clone himself today <laughs> and do two jobs. Thank you so much, Absolutely. Sherry. Welcome back. Happy yeah, down to, be back. to one clicker today. So the overall traffic map is good, but this is a heads up and things have improved a little bit, but it is still a weird situation on westbound TROP. So you're coming off the airport property, thinking to get on the I 15. Team. Yeah, you can get there, but you cannot use the right lane. Now, at one point, there was a car facing the wrong way, and they've taken away a car that went through the fence here and almost right into the New York, New York parking garage, where there is no entrance to the parking garage. And we're told that there were multiple cars involved. I got a feeling that somebody thought that they were making a left turn and then ended up continuing in the westbound lanes heading eastbound. Uh, there are lots of comments on our Facebook page, so uh, check that out. You can get westbound on Trap. Just got to watch out for the emergency vehicles. And uh, coming up in our next report, we'll talk about how the ghost of Project Neon lives on, taking away a ramp in the spaghetti bowl. That's in a few minutes, Alex. Thank you, Nate. 6.33 now. Oil facilities in Saudi Arabia were attacked via drone over the weekend. President Trump says the U.S. knows who is likely responsible. He also hinted that military strikes are on the table in response. Earlier, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo put the blame squarely on Iran. President Trump also tweeted he is ready to release oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve if it's needed. Now, according to some reports, the strike cut the kingdom's oil production in half, and that could cause a spike in prices. Back in the U.S. this morning, General Motors plants in nine states have been shut down. That is because nearly 50,000 workers went on strike overnight. The United Auto Workers say they're fighting for fair wages, affordable quality health care, and job security. It is the union's first national strike since a two-day walkout back in 2007. Union leaders and GM will resume negotiations this morning at 7 o'clock our time. John. 634 now. A UNLV graduate student is in court today. Giovanni Ruiz is accused of killing his ex girlfriend, 19 year old Paula Davis. Bianca Holman joining us live this morning from the North Las Vegas courthouse with those details. Bianca. Good morning, John. This is the arrest report that we were able to obtain, and in it, it shares what Paula Davis's family experienced just days before her death. It also shares what police found at her ex-boyfriend's house, um, and it also details how she was found at Desert Horizons Park, near, just near her home, shot to death in a van. Now, again, more details have been released about this case, and we've been able to learn that officers believe it was her ex-boyfriend, 21-year-old Giovanni Ruiz.
who killed her. They had just broken up just days prior, and last week there was a vigil held for Davis. Hundreds attended, including her family, and another one was held at UNLV where Davis was studying economics. Her family says Davis wanted to work with the FBI after graduating because she enjoyed helping people. And as you can imagine, this entire situation has been devastating for them. When I got out of the car and, and looked inside, I found her. And um, that was surreal. It was earth shattering. Catholic Charities has renamed uh, one of its programs in her memory. It will be called Paula Marie Davis Medical Assisted Treatment Program. The goal is to break the cycle of homelessness, which is an issue that Paula cared about uh, really deeply. And again, we'll have an update from what happens here at the courthouse when Ruiz makes his first court appearance. Bianca Holman, 8 News Now. Bianca, thank you. At 636 now, the Hooters Owls officially fly away from the Hooters Hotel and Casino later today. It is part of the rebranding sparked by the new owners, Oyo Hotel Company. They're from India. Oyo bought Hooters for $135 million. The company is one of the fastest growing hotel groups in the world with more than 12,000 properties. Well, it was a busy sports weekend all around town, punctuated by NASCAR's South Point 400. Up at the Motor Speedway, local legend Kyle Busch, he ran into some problems early on in the race. You see there he hit the wall on lap 12. His brother Kurt also had a pretty garbage day. He crashed early on. Martin Truex Jr., he won stage two, then he did that, took the checkered flag. Kyle Busch did manage a 19th place finish. And the Durango High School graduate was his usual polite self afterwards. Happened there with the 53 uh, there late. 52, get it right. Don't know. Uh, well, how did that impact your car? Killed it. Any uh, other race? I'm just here so I don't get fined. Don't great. Nope, can't pass there. Still don't care. Like, just here so I don't get fined. You feel like if you had been able to get the top 10, I you... I'm answering the dumb questions over and over again. Am I good? And that was Mr. Bush saying that he's answering the same questions. Can he leave? Translation there. Anyway, next year's race here in Las Vegas, the second one anyway, is being pushed back two weeks to later in September. And that should help give fans, drivers, and even Mr. Bush a break from the heat. <laughs> That'll be good. 637 now. Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman will be joining us here on set in just a few minutes. We'll talk with her live about the recent news that the city of Las Vegas was in talks with the Arizona Diamondbacks about them possibly moving here. You're watching 8 News.
you like it. 8newsnow.com. You're watching the Valley's News Leader with John Langler, Alex Backus, Sherry Swensk, and Nate Tannenbaum. This is Good Day Las Vegas on 8 News Now. All righty, everybody, we are getting ready to close out summer. Is that good news for you? It's our last full week of our hottest season. We've got clouds, we've got wind. It's very dry out there. Temperatures are a mix of upper 70s and low 80s. Only 17% humidity, and look at those dew points, only in the 30s. So we're going to stay dry and windy today. Temperatures a little more seasonal, closer to where we should be. 96, 94 is normal, and look at that, hot 107 is the record. No triple digits this week. Sunrise and sunset set will be closer to 12 hours apart. That's the autumnal equinox. Equal day, equal night. That's a week from today as we start fall. We've got red flag warnings, wind advisories in the west, a hurricane off the east coast, but it's turning right and headed back out to the Atlantic, so we don't have to worry about that. Wind advisories for many areas of southern Nevada today, so we're looking at gusts 45 plus. Kiddos, hang on to the homework. We are looking at some strong winds that could be 30 to 40 miles an hour, staying dry, and cool Cooler 80s that are showing up in the seven day forecast. Wait till you see those. Right now, let's look at the roads with Nate, see how the commute's going. Good morning, Nate. Good morning, Sherry. Yeah, the commute's doing very well for the most part. Got this strange crash that happened during the overnight hours on Tropicana westbound. So you're coming out of the airport trying to get to the I 15 on Tropicana. Now, there are more lanes open now, but that far right lane is still blocked. This was a multiple car crash with one car facing the wrong way, one car going through the fence and into the New York, New York parking garage where there is no entrance to the parking garage. So the good news is that the emergency responders who are still there are only blocking the right lane. Most of the cars have been taken away. Just be careful through that area. Uh, to the spaghetti bowl we go where the ghost of Project Neon lives on. The ramp from South 95 to South 15 closed for the next three nights from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. They will take you basically down that same ramp with the Coney off at Charleston. That exit then takes you right to the Charleston on ramp to the South 15. John, Alex. Nate, thank you. It's 642 now in our Monday mornings with the mayor segment. It's coming up right after this break. Indeed, and we have with us back once again for a return appearance. Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman joining us live. Good morning, Mayor. We'll have a live conversation coming up after the break. This is Good Day Las Vegas.
Nevada Eye Physicians. This is Good Day Las Vegas. This is 646. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to our Monday Mornings with the Mayor segment. Joining us here in studio this morning is Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman. Good morning, Mayor. It's morning. great to have you here. I am so delighted welcome to be back. back, and I wore blue to match your floor. Beautiful. <laughs> you look good in everything. That's forethought. We appreciate that, Mayor. It's good <laughs> oh, to see you again. Oh, you good. All right, so we should talk about what was in the news. Big news last week. There was a uh, word that the city had been in discussion with the Arizona Diamondbacks about moving Major League Baseball, that franchise, here for a possible relocation. We've seen the documents. What can you tell us about where things stand and how real this actually might be? Well, certainly you as a longtime Las Vegan by now would know. I think they're trying to use this as a little bit of a wedge to get a better deal mm. where they are. Um, yes, uh, it has been, you know, under a confidential agreement, the discussion. So really, I don't think it's going to happen. They are looking for a place. But really, I think the Arizonians would like to keep everybody right where they are. Yeah, it's hard because we've heard so much discussion about the possibility of Major League Baseball coming here. And then you see these documents from Henderson and from Las Vegas about the Diamondbacks. But you think it's... Well, it's we started there with ice hockey in 1999 with my husband, rumors then, and of course the gaming was a killer. Mm -hmm. But we've heard that about football, we've heard about NBA, and uh, you know, I think one day we will have a Major League Baseball team, but right now, I mean, our focus still stays on MLS, soccer, and uh, also an NBA team. Okay. So another big exciting event we've been talking about is Life is Beautiful, which is coming up this weekend. Anything people need to know ahead of this weekend, Mayor? I know we've been talking about the road closures already in place. Yes, well, I mean, they really need to be cautious, take care of themselves, stay hydrated, of <laughs> course, because it's still going to be hot. But I think most importantly, have a great time. It's music, festival, art, food, just lectures, everything you can possibly imagine. And unlike most of parts of our city, wonderful grass laid down already mm -hmm. and trees that are up so you can semi tailgate or just have a <laughs> wonderful time. Ah. But we're really excited. It brings in about $45 million into the economy. And with this year, I think they're expecting about 190,000. Wow. wow. So be it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay on the periphery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Head up to Area 51. Yes. Um, yes. Another Which big is coming downtown. Yeah, I know, know. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another one downtown. <laughs> so another big project uh, through downtown is Symphony Park. There's construction underway on the apartment complex. There's a lot of development happening on that spot of land that the city was working on, working on for a long time. You know, all roads lead to downtown. You know that the 95, 515 and the I 15 and so it's really exciting I mean obviously we're government center the courts everything but uh, Symphony Park's become really the jewel of the desert we have the expansion of the World Market Center is putting about 315,000 square foot convention center we have a boutique uh, Marriott Hotel being built right next to it we already have up two parking garages everybody screaming get me a parking space <laughs> and then we have these two wonderful new um, mixed-use retail apartment complexes going up, one by Aspen Heights out of uh, Texas, I believe, and Southern Land out of Tennessee. Yeah. So we're really um, excited about those 600 uh, living areas, and we're aggressively moving forward on the rest of the Symphony Park. You know, Derek Stevens and mm -hmm. his brother own the North the northeast end of it yep, too. Yep. How exciting. Uh, Mayor, I can't believe it, but we will commemorate two years now since 1 October in just a couple of weeks. Um, I know last year there was a really nice ceremony held at the Healing Garden on behalf of the city. What's What can people expect this year? You know, it really, it brought us all to our knees and the people, that the relatives of those we lost, the 58 we lost, and all those that were there. It, it's forever burned in our hearts and souls. We will continue to replicate that. We'll do exactly the same thing. It will just be a reverent um, ceremony in the Healing Garden starting at 10.05. We'll read every um, everyone's name that we lost in the order of the trees that were planted for mm -hmm. each um, whom we lost. And then we will toll a bell and, of course, uh, light a candle. And uh, we'll conclude by taps. We're not doing anything. This is totally 
about those we lost and their families. And As it, it should quiet, be. It quiet, mm -hmm. serene, and in a beautiful place. That healing garden came from the heart and soul of all the people that live in Las Vegas. You can't replicate that either because no. it's just it was unique four days around the clock and that garden was in place it's and beautiful it's, too yeah, yeah. Well, mayor good to see you once again coming into the studio to chat with us if you have a question for the mayors yourself you can just go to 8newsnow.com find out if your question is answered every monday right here on 8 news now all right thank you mayor 651 now still to come on 8 news now this morning Youngsters may ask, who are they? But we know, and we've got the scoop on whose first album is coming in more than a decade. We'll be right back on this Monday. This is Good Day Las Vegas. All right, it's 6 30 54, and we are going to start CBS this morning just about six minutes from now. Indeed, joining us right now from Studio 57 in Manhattan, Anthony Mason. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Alex and John. Ahead on CBS this morning, Edward Snowden, the man who revealed classified secret surveillance program documents, joins us in a U.S. television exclusive. He gives new details about that decision. Plus, could you soon pay more for gas? We'll look at the repercussions of the weekend attack on Saudi Arabian oil facilities. And take a dive to a one-of-a-kind research lab on the ocean floor in the Florida Keys. How the loss of seagrass down there affects how we live up here. Quite an office they got down there. We'll see at 7. Uh, must be nice. And very interested to see what Mr. Stoden has to say. Mm -hmm. See you in just about four minutes. Thank you. The 49ers 2-0. San Francisco taking on the bewildered Bengals on Sunday. Jimmy Garoppolo bootlegs to his right and throws from the middle of the stripe B to a wide open Marquise Goodwin. Touchdown 
with ease. Score tied at seven, but not for long. Garoppolo screen pass to Raheem Mostert, who glides into the end zone 39 yards later with no resistance from another professional football player. Second quarter, 49ers still doing whatever they please. Jeff Wilson Jr. shines in the end zone and shushes the crowd. As for the Bengals on offense, they provided an express lane to the quarterback. 49ers compiled four sacks. Meanwhile, Jeff Wilson, no relation to Wilson, from the 2000 feature film Castaway, he scores again. 49ers beat up the Bengals 41 to 17. Next week, they are back at home against the sinking Steelers. For the Red and Gold Report, I'm John Treach. All right, everybody, happy Monday. By the way, CBS this morning doing a full week of a series of climate change stories. Droughts, forest fires, longer, hotter summers, all of that this week. Don't miss it. For us, summer comes to a close in just one week. We've got clouds, we've got dry breezes, and fire weather concerns today. So please be careful with anything that could get a fire started. We've got temps in the upper 70s, low 80s, a little above normal, but that won't last for long as a series of systems will be blowing into the northwest this week. That is a very fall seasonal pattern change. Gusty, dry winds today, though, will keep us on alert for fire weather conditions. 96, not as hot as those low triple digits over the weekend. We even have some 80s coming after more wind on Wednesday. That's very fall like and mornings in the 60s. Enjoy the cooler changes. Let's get to the roads with Nate. We have uh, much better news to report for you on Tropicana westbound heading from McCarran Airport over to the I-15. A multi-car crash at a couple of lanes closed, had somebody facing the wrong way. It has all been cleared out now, so we're going to get traffic signal here so there's no cars, but all lanes are back open. To the Spaghetti Bowl we go where there is a lane closure, a ramp closure for the next three nights. Yeah, it's the ghost of Project Neon living on. They're taking away the ramp from the South 95 to the South 15. It's all on our website, 8newsnow.com. Alex? That is the car's hit from 1984. The band's frontman, Rick Ocasek, has passed away. He was found dead in his New York City apartment Sunday afternoon. He was 75 years old. A cause of death has not yet been announced. His passing comes a year after the cars were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He sang, played guitar, and wrote most of their songs. The group in the 80s, but reunited for a new album in 2011. They, they launched the new Also looking back into the past, The Who, about to release the band's first album in 13 years. It's simply called The Who. The album features 11 new songs, including what you just heard there, Ball and Chain. The new music is due out November 22nd. The Who are touring the United States this fall. The closest they're going to come to Las Vegas, though, is the Hollywood Bowl in L.A., and they're going to play in San Diego as well. Of course, they were, I believe, here in Las Vegas as well for a time. I think they were, too, right? Oh, well, absolutely. We saw them at the MGM Grand Garden Arena back in the 90s. It was uh -huh. the Quadrophenia recreation. It yeah. was awesome. Oh, wow. That's, uh, I, I, anything in the Hollywood Bowl. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the Hollywood Bowl oh, yeah. is a great concert. Sure. And then we lost Eddie Money. Just yes. 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 That was really sad. Yeah. News. So. Yeah. A lot of changes in the music world. Yes. Indeed. All right. All right. CBS This Morning starts in three, two, <laughs> one. Have a good Happy morning. Happy Monday.